Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 18 of the 30 day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Today we're going to continue styling out our customers page, but we're also going to work on a couple of new things that we haven't really addressed before, such as uh, we're going to add a search filter um, as per our wireframe and we're going to add a button as well just to um, complete out the styling process. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to work on actually doing something with the new customer button. All right, so let's get into it. So if we look at our app and where we're at at the moment, um, we're looking like something like this. So we can see our customers um, looking very similar um, to this view here where we've got our customers tiled out three in a row. So if we want to go ahead and add a search bar at the top and a new customer button, let's have a look at how we're going to set up our grid. So when we're looking at um, these two items, we know they're in a row. So from a grid perspective, that's our row. And we know we, there's two of them and we want to control their size because they're laid out slightly differently when we look at it on a mobile device. So on a mobile device, our search bar pretty much goes all the way across the row and our new customer button drops down to a, a row below and it's centered in the middle of the page. It's quite a large button. Um, on the tablet, desktop, TV kind of view, we've, we've got um, the search bar taking up, say, two thirds of that row and the new customer button's on the same row but taking up um, the, the third on the, um, on the end there. So when we're trying to um, grid this out, we'll, we'll use some of the concepts that we went through yesterday. So we'll, we'll start by adding in our columns. So we'll go with div class and uh, we'll, we'll start with our, our mobile device just to make it um, a little bit easier to start off with. So we want the search bar to go all the way across. So we're saying when we're looking at an extra small device, oops, we start with Cole, um, extra small device, so um, put that in there and we want it to go all the way across. So we want it to go um, 12 columns length. Um, however, when we're looking at it on a small device, so call small, um, we want it to go a third of the way across. So we'll go with eight over there. Okay, so that's our, our first column. And the second column, we'll just paste, just copy that, paste that in. And this time again, we'll keep the um, the, when we're looking at it on a mobile device, we'll, we'll let it go kind of all the way across. Um, but when we're looking at it on a tablet or desktop device, we'll change that to four. And um, what that means is when we're looking at it on a small device, which is not a mobile, so larger than a mobile, um, these two still equal to 12. So they should still appear in the, in the same row. Um, just one more thing for this one. I'm just going to make this text centered to get the... Um, get the button um, kind of sitting in the in the center there. All right, now if you recall, um, previously when we looked at um, input devices that had these, oops, these two elements to them, so um, an area where you can actually input a search, um, but also have a little button on the end, um, these were uh, part of uh, what Bootstrap provides as input groups. So let's, let's go and have a quick look at um, and how we'd find that. So we'll go to Bootstrap, we'll go across to Components, um, we'll just go down to Input Groups, and we see here is something similar to um, kind of what we're what we're starting to look for. And there's one here um, which is actually you know, very much the same as what we're after. So we can we can just grab this, um, and what we'll do is we'll just go down to um, go down to this this area of the of the page here, and just copy from Div Class Input Group down to div. So we want to grab the input type, um, the span class, and the, the go part of that button. So we copy that, um, bring that back, and then just paste that into our first column. Now you may have to just clean that up. WebStorm doesn't really appreciate spans very much, so it likes to format it, um, format them in, in its own sort of way. Um, now below that, when, we, um, when we're looking at the wireframe, um, we've also got this new button as well. So we can plug that in um, before we go back and, and format out the search. So we want to add a button. So we're going with um, button. Um, 
type will just be button for now. Um, we'll go with class of button um, and we'll just go uh, oops, button large and um, we want it to be green so we'll go button success um, and that should give us that bright green kind of button um, but would we'll also just make sure that um, that the text within the button is also centered so we'll just put in text center in there as well um, now when we drop this down there's two things that we see on that button one is an icon and one is a little bit of text so again we're going to add our um, glyphicon for user so we'll go i class um, but actually there's another quicker way because we've actually used it before so we'll just copy it from here so let's just do that um, so we grab that from there and then just under that um, just put a, 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 a break um, and then just under that we're just going to add um, new customer. So the break just pushes it um, onto, the, onto the next line. Um, now up here on our, our input groups, if you remember when we were looking at, um, at Bootstrap, there were, in, well, there were ways to determine the size of an input group. Um, and if we do that, we go to size and we can see that if we use this input group large, um, we can make our input group um, quite nice and, and, and big. So we'll just put that on the end of the input group. Oops. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got so far. Okay, so we have um, sort of started to format out um, our, our page. We've got a really nice and large kind of input group. Um, it's very similar to our, um, our wireframe and we've got a large kind of button on the side there as well. Now that button is actually quite big. It's, it's actually much bigger than um, the size of the input group. So we could actually drop that down a little bit um, and let's go and have a look at what our button options are. So if we um, if we just go across to CSS and go down to buttons, you can see that we can also determine the size of buttons. So there's a large button, a default, a small, and so on and so forth. Now let's see if we took that button large away, how does that look in terms of sizing? Okay, that, that probably looks a little bit better. Um, so you can see that the, the new customer button's running straight into our list here. However, in that wireframe, there's, um, there's a little bit of space between the two. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. We could add classes. We could add um, some margins around um, our, our, our top columns. Um, the quickest way is just to add um, div class row, um, throw that div around the bottom, just indent that code within the row. And um, just throw a couple of breaks, oops, in the close section, um, over here, oops, don't mean to close section. And that'll just, um, it, it's just the same as if you were writing in, um, writing up a Word document and you just hit enter a couple of times just to give it a bit of space. All right, so that's, that's given us a little bit of space there. So we want to actually search for our customer and at the moment, if I type something in, let's say I typed Peter, nothing happens, right? Because this particular input field for searching isn't connected to um, to this list of customers in any way. So how do we how do we kind of connect these two together? Well, it's actually um, actually fairly straightforward um, in order to be able to do that. Now, if you weren't sure and you wanted to know, well, how do I actually connect these two things together? Um, a good place to go and have a look at is the, um, the Angular page. So if we then jump across to Angular, go across to develop and just go to um, the API reference. And we, we're looking at filters. So similar to the way how we filtered a date um, yesterday, today we're going to look at how we, um, we filter through a search. So we can just go down to filters and we just go to filter and this is this is the syntax that we'd need to use to filter something. So 
we've got um, an example right here. So for example, our input that we, we've got, which is this input here, search, is this reference here. And that's referring to this ng model of search text. And then this search text is appearing in the ng repeat as a filter. So let's look at something similar. So let's copy that ng model next to input, copy that, grab that over here and put that next to your input. So we've got a type of text, which is fine, class of form control, which is fine. And then we're just going to use ng model of search text. Now, the next thing it says is for the ng repeat, we also need this pipe with a filter of search text. So if we copy that again, come over here, and in our ng repeat, so just scroll down and find the ng repeat. At the end of customers, just throw in this pipe with search text. Just make sure you've only got um, one set of closing quotes on the end. Okay, could it really be that simple? Well, let's have a go. So if we just save that and go across to our app, And this time we'll try and type in Peter. And before we even hit enter, our app has already searched and filtered out the data we're looking for. So if we want to search for Mary, there's Mary. If we want to search for Ali, there's Ali. All right, how cool is that? So we've been able to, um, just using a couple lines of code, which is already available for us in the Angular documentation, we can copy that along and add search functions to our app. Um, now, just one more thing. When we looked at um, our wireframe, it also sort of says search dot, dot, dot. Now, that's what we call a placeholder. So again, in on our input, on the end of that, if we just type in placeholder and say search dot, 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 that will give us that placeholder um, as per what's in our, our wireframe. And there you go. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. So we're very close to completing our list of customers. And we've actually gone through and added um, some, some search functionality and a new button. Tomorrow, when we click on that button, we'll try and get the process to connect to actually allow us to create a new customer. Um, thanks for um, joining me and um, please subscribe to the channel and check out bossable.com for more details. See you tomorrow.